Quilt Monday, where I will sew some more on this quilt today. So. <laughs> Um, we're going to continue working on this rose quilt. So this is part two. I started this last Sunday, which the link is not in the description below, but it will be later because I'll get to it then. <laughs> but I put it on the wall so that you guys can see what it looks like while I'm working on it because I just got to add the in between sashing and stuff and so on and so forth. So, yep. Please can see who's all here. We've got Beth, Joanne, Barbara, Debbie, uh, the Siberian Wind, Rhonda, Chloe, Paula, Nancy, Tracy, Polly, uh, Micheline, oh, Joanne, my, yeah, Micheline, Judy, Karen, B, Mary, Lynn, Karen, Jeanette, Linda, Judy, another Judy, Brenda. Katie, Diana, Kim, and so many more. You want to say hi, Mr. Thumper? Hi. Is that cat saying hi? Hi, everybody. Hi. hi. Okay. Hi. <laughs> yeah, Thumper's hanging out on Tiffany's quilting line. All right, and then recently in the mail, I had also gotten, I just opened it on Wednesday or Tuesday. Was it Tuesday? I don't remember. It was Friday? Maybe it was Friday or Thursday. Friday. One of those days, I got some pink. The same person that sent me this fabric sent me the pinks right here so that once we get these sashings in between, I can put borders around it with all pink. And this will just be the like super pink quilt because it's I called it the pink rose quilt because that's what I named today's video and renamed last week's video so I'm just going to go ahead and get started because all I need to do is put these sashings on here and I need to put I forgot already how many across one two three four five six seven so we need six of these together and then this is my seventh which is the all by itself thing. And I'm sorry, I didn't even put my microphone. It's been hanging this whole time. I'm pretty sure they heard me though. Not right yet, no. <clears throat> all right, here we go. One of these, one of these. And I'm just gonna chain piece all these through. These are one inch strips with little one inch cornerstones. And well, it'd be nice if the machine was properly threaded. I haven't sewn in here in a few days. Everything's all dusty again. I just wiped it all off too. This room gets so dusty. Out of the whole entire house, this is the dustiest room because I sew in it. And that needle punching through fabric creates so much dust. The thread running through the machine creates so much dust. It's just dusty. Whew. Drives me nuts sometimes. All right, let's try that again now that it's threaded properly. What color? Oh, I have a gold in the bobbin. I was trying to use up some of my bobbins. Oops, this way. Anyways, what's everybody been up to? Hopefully everybody's getting some quilting done. I spent this weekend, yesterday and Friday, at the quilt show, the local quilt show. It was quite fun, lots of quilts to look at, and no worries, guys. Not only did I take photos, but I took video footage, and then there'll be an extra video of something that most of you probably don't know about. So, well, a lot of you beginners have never seen or know about. So, this quilt show will have a bonus video with it because I usually only do two of the photo version and a video footage version for those of you who can't stand the camera moving because I'm I'm a really bad videographer <laughs> and I didn't use a tripod to do anything you know I just held my camera and kind of 
walked along and went above people's heads so that I didn't get people in my video. You know, that's the one thing about being a content creator is I, I don't want to ask everybody for, for permission if it's okay to be in my video. But some things I did. So, and, and they didn't care. But I don't want to ask everybody because that's a lot of people. <laughs> and I also got to meet quite a few of you from out there in YouTube world. Oh my goodness. I was overwhelmed with all the friends that came up to me and knew who I was and said hi. So you guys, awesome, awesome you. So glad that you were able to make it here and say hi. And there's some of you out there that watch, but on a TV only that showed up. So I never see the names in the chats or comments because you watch from a TV only. But still, you watch religiously and I'm happy. <laughs> and it was so wonderful to meet you all. So the, the next Meet Me experience will be QuiltCon at the end of the month. I leave on the 19th and I'll be at the QuiltCon thing the 22nd through however many days equals four days. <laughs> and then, yeah, to the 26th. And then uh, that will be in Raleigh, North Carolina. Obviously, I'll keep you posted on my um, community tab, which is here on YouTube. You go to my main page and... and you go to the top thing where it says home, videos, shorts, live, playlists, some community, whatever. You know, it says all that at the top. And I will keep everybody posted for that. Just like the day that we go to the Mid-Atlantic Quilt Fest, Quilt Show or whatever it's called. I will also keep updated on that as well because that's that following weekend. And I think, I don't know if we're going Friday or Saturday, so... I just know we're going one of the days. I'm not the driver, so I don't control the schedule. <laughs> I'm just along for the ride. Which would be different, because usually I'm the driver for everything. <laughs> Just a few more of these, and then I'm going to put the twos into fours, and then the fours into sixes. Well, I can't do all of them into fours. I have to save some to, as twos. All right. I got to count how many rows there are. That way I know how many to pull out. I need one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Those are the ones I'll add to the end. The rest of this I'm going to turn into fours. I'm not even pressing it either. I will finger press when I get to the next step. Come on. Let's just throw that right there. Put this here. Grab one of these and put it on there. And I should get seven of these. And I should have a petal that stays. You know, I keep saying to myself, oh, I'm going to put some hot glue gun glue on the bottom of my petal. And I still have we yet to do it. Weekend. I was busy all weekend, though. And I had a lot of busy days during the week, too, making things and trying to do stuff. And then. I will be busy this week as well. I got some jobs while I was at the quilt show. Um, someone brought me work. So, because I do long arm work and some of the people are within the area, like Parker, or Bullhead, or those kind of things. So, a job was waiting for me while I was at the quilt show from out of town, but close enough to drive here. direction. Actually, it's more than one job. It's two in one job. Motorcycle quilts. Yeah, motorcycle quilts. Oops. Why do I keep turning it that way? I don't know, because I'm weird. One, two, three, four, five. This is six, and that's seven. Okay. Yep, I did put enough for this. I counted them last week, so it should have been spout out in this week because I didn't move anything. 
or do anything different. This is going to be a pretty uh, generous size quilt too, surprisingly. All right, I'm just going to leave them connected and add. Well, that's going to be a little hard, but we're going to do it. Just stay right there. <laughs> All right, so we're going to put this on here. And we're going to find another one, which is this one. Grab one of these. <coughs> Excuse me. We're supposed to get rain on Tuesday here. A lot of rain. California is getting smothered by it right now. So those of you in California, stay inside. Get some sewing done while Does it's raining. Does my shirt come in blue? The one that I'm currently wearing was made for me. So I don't know what colors it would come in. It was made for me. Any suggestion on making templates, material, etc.? Any suggestion on making templates? Well, you can cut them out with paper. You can cut them out with... Oh, man, where is that stuff? It's over there somewhere. I have this stuff. I'm going to show you guys only because some people have asked in the past, and I keep forgetting to do it. Where did I put it? It's like right here somewhere. Hold on, I'm just out of the screen on my shelf next to me where I keep my strange and odd stuff. Where is it? It literally used to be right here, but it's not right here at the very moment. Oh, here it is, right here, found it. All right, so at the Dollar Tree, they sell this stuff right here, chopping mats. Oops, I had already taken some out, so you get two chopping mats like this. They sell these at the Dollar Tree at the 99 cent store. They're probably a different name at the 99 cent store, but I got mine at the Dollar Tree. And you can actually take, cut out a piece of paper template first, you know, and then cut these because it is like, it's like a, can you hear that? It's pretty thick. I mean, it's not horribly, like super thick or anything, but it definitely makes good templates and it has a rough side and a soft side. And I always put the rough side onto the fabric because it doesn't move. And then I just use a ruler next to it, my template, you know, and then cut. And I never really end up cutting the template because the ruler lines up nicely with it. But yeah, this stuff is amazing. And uh, I've been using it for a really long time. And I keep forgetting every time someone asks, what do you use to make your little templates? This is what I use. I've been using it for a long time. I got the tip like five years ago and we went and bought this stuff. And I've cut out triangle templates and just odd end shaped templates from this stuff. But it's only a dollar at the Dollar Tree, well, a dollar and a quarter, you know what I mean? And yeah, it works amazing. So, good stuff. So, if you need to make templates for something, I would get that. And if you don't have a Dollar Tree or 99 cent store or something, you know, uh, try Family Dollar or. I don't know what that other one's called. What is that other one called? Dollar General, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Anything that has a dollar name attached to the store, <laughs> that would work. <laughs> they probably have them in the baking section. All right. Or, you know, pots and pans and whatever section. All right, and I'm going to come back to the top and add my seventh piece, which is just a straight one on all of these. So I'm just going to find the end, attach one, find the end, attach one. And that way that everything's still hooked together, even though they don't need to be hooked together. But man, I did it again. Come on, come on. I'm just going to use this thing. My little needle threader. As long as I leave a long enough tail, I don't have that problem. All right, grab the end, attach one of these. Sashing is pretty easy to do. I know a lot of people don't like working with one inch, but 
That's what I'm working with because I didn't have a lot of this dark pink color to work with. But I'm making it work. So. Just the last one. Oh, it is. Look at that. So I had one extra piece, two extra pieces. I overly cut, but that's okay. All right, now I'm going to snip them apart and I'm going to finger press towards the dark pink color. Let's come this way a little and separate all these. Canada has Dollarama. Dollarama? Yeah. Oh, that sounds awesome. She said they had a Dollarama, that's why I asked where she was. It's in Eastern Canada. Dollarama. <laughs> Interesting. Everywhere, every country is going to have a different type of dollar store, but dollar stores are like super common, I think, anywhere. Can you cut more than one template at a time? You can cut more than one template at a time, but I wouldn't suggest it with those things. But you can cut more than one piece of fabric at a time using your template. All right, so I'm going to just take and press, finger press these that I added on all towards the pink. Because these go towards the pink this way, so that way everything can nest nicely. All right, there's one all pressed. These are little pieces, so that's why I'm not worried about finger pressing with my finger, because it's a really tiny seam. In Ireland, it's called the Euro store. Ah, so one Euro is a dollar then, for American, I mean. Euro, I kind of like the name, Euro store. <laughs> I don't know if they're the equal, they equal the same, but yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's a dollar store, it's the Euro store. Yep. So in Mexico, it would probably be the peso store. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what a pace, a one peso equals, but you know what I'm getting at. That would be cool, though. Needle threader you use just the usual type? Or yeah. Something just for the machine? No, it's not. I don't use the machine one. It's just a little hummingbird. You can find these at Fat Quarter Shop. Um, I think Sewing Machines Plus sells them. I have tons of affiliate links you can go on. Most of those probably have it, though. Even connecting threads or... Um, we got ours at Walmart. Or, yeah. We got ours at Walmart, so you can even check Walmart. But um, uh, what else do I have on there? Um, superior threads probably even sell them. Anywhere that sells threads probably has a needle threader. <laughs> but again, we got ours at Walmart, so you can check Walmart. I have quite a few of them so that I can have, if I have more than one machine set up, a needle threader can go at every machine. But my new Juki, the HZLF600, I can't say it's new anymore because I've had it for over a year, but that one, honestly, I don't need to use a separate needle threader because the needle threader that's built on the machine is like super easy to use. This one, complicated, <laughs> but the other one, super easy. And I'm really used to my brother one too, the SQ9285. I can totally use the needle threader on that one also, but I don't use that machine as much. That's for my slower sewers that come to visit. They can use the Pento. <laughs> Pento. All right, I'm gonna add the sashing to this right here on this side. So I'm just going to take one of these and I'm just going to line it up on here. I'm going to nest my seams and sew on down. Just going to hold it in place, line up the next ones by holding it in place. Last week I did have some that did not want to nest, <laughs> so I had to rip them and reline them back up. but. Hoping this week I don't have that problem. I just hold it nicely.
with my fingernails to line it up. Come to this top right here. Any tips on nesting? Is it about planning which side you press to? Yeah, nesting seams would be opposite. So, see, I did this again. Um, if you're making, like, say, four patch blocks, the top piece would need to be pressed to the right or left only. And then the bottom piece, so one would be the right and one would be the left. And then they would be opposite of each other. That way you get that lock when they come together. Fortunately, like things like I'm doing right this very moment, um, these little guys right here are a little bit trickier to get exactly right because the fabric is so small, the amount that you're sewing, it wants to shift. It does this every time. And I could pin. I could. I could put some pins in here and then then sew it. But even with pins, I've had shifting with adding really skinny. Just need to fix this little section. Let's check and make sure that's the only one. That one's fine. That one's fine. That one shifted too much too. See, I'm gonna go a different route when I sew the rest of them on because this is gonna highly annoy me if I have to keep ripping. <laughs> oy, oy, oy. I'll just use pins. Pin it. I don't like to pin. It's too much time, but I'm taking as an, as much time to rip it than I would to pin it, so I guess I should pin it. What if you don't sew accurate enough and the seams don't meet? If you don't sew accurate enough and the seams don't meet, then trim your blocks to match up. All right, we're going to... You can rip it out and start over, yes. Um, if it's already sewn and it's not matched up, just rip out that section only and sew it. All right, let's try to hold this nicely. So very slow. Hey, get off of that. Go. And it's still not straight. What, what, what? Um, See, I'm telling you, even slow sewing. See, even I get frustrated and have issues, my friends. I have a feeling it's because these pink pieces were like some probably bigger than they should have been. So they're not exactly sitting where they should sit. All right. I don't know why, but it's not gripping the way I had hoped. It's almost like it tangled it all up in there. All right, we're going to put that on the bottom. I'm going to put this nested, and we're going to add some pins, even though I don't want to. I'm going to. I want that to stay right there, and I want this to stay right here. Let's try that again. Is this from a leg kit or a time pack? This is from yardage that was donated to me. Just scrap fabric. And if it's not straight, I'm not redoing that again. Mm, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it. <laughs> I really am not in the mood. <laughs> better done than perfect. Right? Ah, right? It's better done than perfect for sure. Okay, I'm going to pin this one. See, even with pins, sometimes it doesn't line up. I'm nesting those seams beautifully. I don't know the problem. It just wants to be a butt head is what it wants to be. Sometimes, you know, 
Uh, see, that one's still out. I think it's the pink ones ended up a smidge too long, maybe. I don't know. I don't know what's happening here. Are you going to do another video on your dream quilt? Um, my, okay, I'll tell you this now. I just got a comment that I responded to earlier. My dream quilt is done. The top is made. It is super made. But I have been contemplating border. Borders plural. It's 99 by 99 or 100 by 100, whatever. It's something like that. And I can leave it like that and it'll fit perfectly on a queen size. But you know me and the liking of king size quilts, even though I don't even have a king size bed. Um, so I really want to go around it with borders. But then I'm like, maybe I shouldn't because it's already huge. But then it just ends in white. So I kind of want to end it not in white. It's one of those things. So as soon as that decision is finally made, then I'll show you guys. Hey, maybe even by then I'll have just thrown it on the long arm and quilted it. <laughs> I could show you. I could show you guys without borders real quick what it looks like. Um, this one's going to be hard though. We're going to have to take it to the living room floor. Uh, we have to take it to the living room floor and lay it out because me and Scott holding it here, you won't see what the actual true quilt fully looks like. So. Before we end today, I'll just take it out there and, and with the camera and show you guys what it looks like. So, Scotty, remind me. Before we're done, okay. we'll go out to the living room and look at it. All right. Grab another one of these, and we're going to pin it. I know. Pinning. Tiffany, pinning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. This just takes too long, you know? Where did we get the red snap? Well, I know where, but where can you buy them? You can buy the red snappers. Uh, last I knew, Sewing Machines Plus had them, um, but you can also go to reneesredsnappers.com. I don't know if they actually sell them there, though, but I do know that So Yeah carries them. Other than that, I don't know who else carries them, honestly. Fat Quarter Shop? No, Fat Quarter Shop doesn't sell long arm stuff. Oh, and where did you say? Sewing Machines Plus. Oh. There we yeah. Go. Anywhere that sells like Alinda's Electric Quilters, I'm not an affiliate with them, but they sell long arm supplies. Anywhere that sells long arm supplies should sell the red snappers for the long arm. So if you're, you know, just buying a long arm or something or whatever, you know, I would try places that sell long arm supplies for those. But you could also check uh, eBay or um, what is it called? Amazon, you know, things like that also. Should, you know, I don't know, maybe carry them. I'm not 100% on that. I'm also not 100% on this whole pinning thing. It's driving me crazy already. I could have had this whole thing sewn on <laughs> already. <laughs> so I'm just literally butting these seams up and then putting a pin in it to hold it in place so that it does not shift, move, or anything. They're actually called red snappers, right? Yeah, they're called Renee's red snappers. I can't forget that part. Renee's red snappers. It's R E N E R E N A E A R E N E A. Whatever. It's something like that. Don't ask me how to spell it. I just know how to say it. I probably should be using my little tiny pins because these big, huge ones are driving me nuts. You need me hand you something? No. Can you get me a, a my hair clip from next to the bed, please? And yes, I'm sewing right over the pins. Bad habit, I know. But I don't really want to use them, so that's why I'm sewing right over them. Thank you, thank you. Sorry guys, I have to tie my hair up. Sometimes it's just like all these little flyaways that I have on my head. They're just all flying into my eyeballs and into my mouth. and. 
My hair's kind of long. And before you even ask, yes, I'm growing my hair as long as I could possibly grow it. I have really, really thin hair. And if I ever do want to donate my hair, I need my hair to be all the way down to my butt. Not where I'm sitting on it, but close to my butt. Because I need to make a wig. It needs to be most of my hair folded in half. I need to have two lengths of it because I have very thin hair. So they're not going to get much of a wig out of my hair if I donate it. So I need to grow it long. Just keep on growing. Just, yep, keep on growing. Like, it's really long now. If I wanted to chop off my ponytail, I probably could. But it's not much hair, so there's no point. Because I have super thin hair. <laughs> like They're going to grab the marker and like mark the calendar. They just me using pens. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna switch out of these ones though, and I'm gonna use my coffin ones. Oh, come on. And yes, I call them my coffin pins because it looks like a coffin that they're in, but these things are so tiny. A lot easier to maneuver into the fabric because they're so small. How do the red snappers actually go on? Explain to her that. I have a video on how to install the red snappers um, in my long arm playlist. But they don't just hook on. But they don't so just hook there. on. You have to sew a channel for the rod to go in so that the outside hook can snap to it. All right, this one's going to go there. And then this one needs one on the top. Open said coffin and start using some pins. Put the seam ripper away because I shouldn't need it if I'm using pins. <laughs> All right. These are those iron proof pins. If you guys didn't know that if you're a beginner and don't know that they exist, these pins right here, you can put an iron over it and it doesn't burn. It's really cool. And it doesn't ruin your iron either because it's like a special kind of plastic of some sort. I don't even need to put two. Let's put one and see how that goes because these are really good pins. And they're really, really skinny pins too. So they're like, Super pokey. Really, really pokey. We're going to try just one. One doesn't work and I shift again. I'm just going to go back to two. This should work if I put the pin at the toppest one, the higher one, where the machine will take in first kind of deal. Sorry if my phone just went zzzz. Zzz. <laughs> well, I've been told that you guys have commented before you can hear it. What's that that beeping sound or buzzing sound every time I watch a video? Well, it's because I film from my phone. And uh, unfortunately, I cannot control when I get emails and alerts all the time. It just comes on through phone calls, all of it. And let's just say it happens all day long. That's why I keep my phone on vibrate only. I don't even put the sound on ever. The only time I put the sound on is if Scott and I are both at Walmart and we separate. He goes and looks for a couple items here on this side of the store and I go the other side. That way we can call and say we're ready to, <laughs> to meet in the middle. <laughs> have you ever sewn a pin up in a quilt? I have never sewn a pin into a quilt because I usually don't use pins. So there's no... No accidents there because I don't really use them. This is like, this is the most rarest thing you'll see on my channel. It's, this is, this is like, wow, you know. <laughs> but I've poked myself with pins and I've also, when I used to use pins on the long arm before I got the red snappers. I uh, pinned through myself before. That was quite the experience. I was just quilting along and I leaned my belly against what they call the belly bar and I just slid instead of like stepped away and went down. I kind of slid and the pin went in my gut and out my gut and hooked me to the long arm. <laughs> 
So now you guys know. This is why I hate pins. I poke the crud out of my fingers. I make myself bleed, and since I have nerve problems, sometimes it doesn't hurt because, you know, my nerves are screwed up. So, yeah. Do you I, use a liter bar, yes or no? A liter bar? Liter for, bar, yes or no? That's I have no idea. A what. liter cloth, sorry. Yeah, my long arm has liter cloths, yes. I read it wrong, sorry. Yep. Has it on the take up bar, the uh, back, the backing bar, which is the take up on the one side, and then it has it on the quilt top bar, except I don't use that one unless I absolutely have to. All right, that goes there. All right, next. Here we go. More pinning. Oy. But the one pin thing did work, so I'm just going to stick with one pin at the first seam that will come closest to the machine when I'm sewing. Come on. And they lock when you nest, by the way. You can feel it lock with your fingers. Oh, Ruby's on here from the <clears throat> Habitu show. That is great to have seen you. Yes, Ruby. Th yes, it was wonderful to see you in chat. I know some of you also got to, well, sort of meet my son and my daughter-in-law because David, Damon and Gabby came down to see Mama's quilt. So speaking of the quilt show and my quilt that I entered, I don't have it in here to show you guys, but you'll see it in the video. I won an award. Who knew? Anyways, <laughs> I won an award, but the award I got this time was the Arizona Quilters Guild Vice President's Choice. That's what I got. That's a big deal. The vice president of the Arizona Quilters Guild chose my quilt. Somebody knows what they like. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I entered my a girl's best friend quilt. If you guys have been following my channel a long time, you know what a girl's best friend is, right? Anyways, that quilt was made while I was sewing it in my bedroom. So that's how long ago. And it... I didn't finish it until 2019. So I started it in like 2016, maybe 2017. And I finished it in 2019. <laughs> it hung in the closet that long. And uh, yeah, it got finished and I made it for my bed originally, but it doesn't go on my bed at all because uh, Thumpy's hair gets woven into it and it's black, white and gray. And I really don't want his hair all over it. So it hangs on a quilt ladder. I call it my giant wall hanging. Because that's all it is, is a giant wall hanging. <laughs> it has a sleeve built. I sewed the sleeve in. I sewed it in nice enough to where you can still use it on a bed, even with the sleeve on it. So, um, yeah, it has a sleeve built on, on it for life. It's never going to get taken off. It's just a giant wall hanging. I don't have a giant wall enough to put it anywhere besides behind me, honestly. But yeah. That's all it is. But it was the first quilt I made for myself. For my bed. So 
So I definitely hold it dear to my heart. A lot of people ask me too, is it really hard to sew diamonds on the bias like that? And I was like, no. I don't even think I pinned that quilt. I just sewed it. If you watch the videos, I just sewed and sewed and sewed until it was together. Come on. My nails are kind of long claws right now, so they're uh, struggling to pick up these little pins. <gasps> Kitty cuts just meowing up a storm. Thumper says, pay attention to me, people. He knows it's Sunday. <laughs> Such a weird cat. It's not stuff meowing. It's not oh, don't do that. Oh, yeah anyways that's what i entered into the show again i'll get to the videos when i get to them i was so tired yesterday i didn't even bother transferring all the footage and everything to the computer so that i could edit it and i was so tired today that i didn't even bother doing it today either so i will get to it either tomorrow or the next day it doesn't take me long once i start editing I, it doesn't take me too long to i just realized that those two colors are exactly the same and they're going to be right on top of each other what happens if I put this one there? No. Hold on, I gotta take a look at this real quick. Let's see. Is it the same if I put that one here? Let's take that out, put that there. Okay, and then let's see. Is it the same if I put this there? Oh, look at that, that's perfect. Okay, we're just gonna play a row swap. I thought I was paying attention to that when I started piecing this last week, but obviously I wasn't paying that much attention. <laughs> Bumper! Come here, kitty kitty! He probably wants uh, to play. He used to never meow either. It's so weird that he meows now. For everything. need one just need one I have third three different length pins in here some are really really long some are short and then there's a medium one I really don't want to use the really really long ones I'm trying to use my little tiny shorter one all right next let's get this on here <laughs>
honestly, this quilt does not need to be perfect because this quilt is just a throw for one. And for two, it's just for me to play on the long arm with. Sometimes I just make really messy quilts just so that I can test the tension or do something on the long arm with. I don't know. Just mess around and have fun with it. Obviously, I'm probably just going to quilt roses all over the whole thing. <laughs> last one and then we can start putting the rows together will you heat up the iron so that we can press all these back one row at a time so we don't get them out of order okay got a pin right here to hold it watch this let's see if i can do this this whole direction while you're doing things do i have any what Advice for the long arm? Uh, I don't know what kind of advice for a long arm you would be seeking. Um, watch, your watch my videos. I have lots of long arm quilting videos. Second from the top and third from the bottom at the same square. Second from the top and third from the bottom. None of them are the same on top of each other so far that I can see. I'm trying the just holding it pin way just to see. So far, I hope it's working. Um, it don't matter because it's uh. We have to take each row down one at a time so we don't get them back out of order. Why are you kidding me? Come on. The one you're sewing on now. The machine I'm sewing on now? What do, what do you need no, to know the, for? The one you're sewing on now and the one above it? You're saying it has the same block? <laughs> We'll look in two seconds. Let me sew this on here. Okay. Oh, look at that. I didn't use a pin there and it lined up. Oh, look at that. So did that one. This one I held the pin on. It looks fine. I guess it's hit or miss with the whole lining up thing. <laughs> All right, let's look. Totally different, totally different, totally different, totally different, totally different. Oh, right here. I see. Um, nope, those will be the same. Let's put, yeah, I'm going to put a yellow there. And I'm going to put, let's see what happens if I move this one here. And this one here. None of those are the same. Oh, those are the same. So no matter where I put that one, it's putting the same on top. If I put this one down here, it's going to put this one there, matching that one. If I take this one and put it down there, it's going to put the same in that row. And then it'll be three in a row if I move this one. Honestly. I'm just going to leave it. Where's it at? Where are the two on top of each other? Did I? Oh, yeah, right here. I'm just going to leave it because if I move it, it's going to put those sames on top of each other on this side. Unless I take this whole unit and turn it in somewhere else. Like I said, it's just going to be a whatever quilt. It's just for whatever. So I'm just going to leave it. Let me. Press these back real quick so that they stay a little bit flatter. I got it because I'm going to um, put them right back exactly where they were. I just need them to stay a little bit flatter because we never pressed anything. I just sewed it all on. All right. 
The only row that got pressed was this top one right here. Probably why they were shifting so much. I made Scotty that shirt yesterday yeah, before the quilt shirt. show. We threw it on the embroidery machine. Said, "Okay, we need a shirt that he can wear that had my name on it." Because I wore my new shirt that said "Quilting." Because murder is some. What did it say? Because murder is wrong. That's what it says that I got in the mail. No, it says wrong. Yeah, it says quilting because murder is wrong. And I got so many compliments. So you know who you are that sent that to me? That thing was a hit, that shirt at the quilt show. And I am not even sure where to get it. So I just said, look online for funny quilting t-shirts. Maybe you'll find it. That's all I told everybody that asked. Because <laughs> I didn't know what to say. I wasn't sure where it even came from. No, it's these wonderful, lovely seams are not pressed. I didn't press anything first. So <laughs> they're wanting to go whatever way they want to go. And I need them to stay in, not out. I even have puckers. Oh, well, I'm leaving them. It's in my sewing. I'm not taking it out. They're little tiny puckers, though. That's what I get for pinning puckers. All right, two more. Let's put this up just a little bit higher. There we go. Oh, wow. And one more. And then we'll start hooking them together. <clears throat> I never told Anil I'm not a perfect piecer. You guys think I am, but I am not. I do what I do how I do it, and however it lands, it lands. All right. Let's start sewing them together. So I'm going to put this one on top of this one. And so this seam, I'm going to do that same where I just hold the pin at it trick. Let's see if it helps. Just going to nest those seams. I'm going to put my pin right here at the edge. Come right up to it, pull it out. Put it on this edge, come right up to it, pull it out. Honestly, this one should probably stay though. Let's see. Grab it. Oh, come How big on. are the squares? These little squares are the big ones. The big ones are, I think they're six and a half inches. I honestly did not write any of that down because um I didn't write any of it down. They look about six and a half, though. I'm pretty sure they're six and a half. It's so it's six and, a half. It, six and a half. Yeah. There's the uh, yeah, six and a half inch yeah. squares. Makes it six and a half. Yes, they are six and a half. <laughs> yep. Oh, 
All right, let's see. Did that land good? Good enough for me. Good enough. Not good enough for me. Ooh. Okay, well, those are good. Those are good. Those what are good. And I'm just going to leave that. The Put the row what? With the same print on the bottom. I, I have no idea what you're talking about. But I can swap to the top or bottom, yeah. I could put this one on the top. Let's see, are anything matching? The third one is not that. The last one is not that. Which is the one that matches? Oh, it's those ones. So technically, it would have to be removed from here. Let's just see. Put that there real quickly like. And then put this one on the top up here. And no, nope, the two ends are the same. And I already sewed the one piece to it. Let's put that there and see. I don't really care, but I'll just do this anyway. And then put this one up here. And then those two would be the same. So no, I can't. How oh, I don't even remember how I had it now. Those two are the same, so that would be a no. I'm just gonna leave it, it's fine. It's just two squares, it's no big deal. All right, and this one was right here. If I put it on the bottom, those two are on the same. See, so honestly, it doesn't really matter. I put it above that, those two are the same. If I put it above that, those two are the same. I didn't think about that totally. I was just adding and I was thought I was paying attention, but I guess I wasn't <laughs> when I did it, you know, last week when I was chain piecing it all together, I thought I was paying attention. What was on top of what, but not paying good enough attention, I guess. And no, I'm not pinning now. <laughs> I'm just done with the whole pin thing. Sometimes I just, yeah, don't want to do it. Before I do anything though, I need to press the bottom one in this one real quick. Okay. Okay. This goes this way, right? Well, yeah. Something about doing it that goes that way. Let's press this one real quick. So on, pull this back. Come on. It's turning out a lot wonkier than I had anticipated. <laughs> I have no idea. What's six and a half times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven minus one, two, three inches? I mean, one, one inch, two inch, and a half inch minus two and a half inches. I don't know. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know either. 
I don't do math. I am not a mathematician whatsoever. I can't do math in my head. One plus one is five. You know, like, it's just not my thing. <laughs> I just make things up as I go 90% of the time. So most of the time, I don't even know what a finished quilt size is going to be until I've done put it together. Every now and then, I'll film a tutorial for you guys. And I go back in and edit out those segments that say how big I think it'll be and put the actual size <laughs> in the video. <laughs> the only reason why I knew how big Weave It was going to be is because I made an example quilt, then made it, you know. But most times, I don't make an example because the main quilt or that first quilt that I'm making takes a long time to make, so. Press this one real quick. Yeah. I don't know anything. I'm just the creator. Don't ask. <laughs> just like someone asked me yesterday at the quilt show. So, do you just, you know, make your quilts and then, um, record it and send the video footage to somebody. And I was like, no, I edit myself. So you're not only just a designer, you're a quilter, you're a piecer, and you're a videographer. And I said, yep. <laughs> but hey, the one fan that we met was not only a quilter, she did jewelry, she yep. did stained glass windows. Yep. So she was a jack of all trades. Yep, for sure. That one lady, she was really into it. Yeah. She was a craft extraordinaire. <laughs> I am definitely not a craft extraordinaire. This is my craft right here. Uh, I quilt. And that if you want to consider embroidery part of whatever, it's still part of my sewing and quilting because I add my embroidery to my sewing and quilting. So... Technically, I do two things, but it all has to do with the quilts, so it's okay. And you're an awesome enchilada maker. And a, an enchilada maker, yep. yep. I'm not a good baker, I'm not any of that. I don't even have any other hobbies. Like I don't, I can bowl. I know how to, but I don't go bowling. Can I, pool? I can play pool. I used to be on a pool league, um, but like, it's not really a hobby though. I don't really do it anymore. So no I just swim, but no other creative stuff. No yeah, Alexa, my oldest daughter, she's the baker. She's yeah. the one that likes to bake things. <laughs> yeah, I just I just make quilts I didn't even have any I wasn't I didn't really do any crafts before quilts I used to do the t-shirt tying thing but that's not really a craft is it I mean honestly they, look pretty cool. they looked cool but it's not really a craft I don't know cool. yeah but I don't have any other like crafty hobbies I don't crochet, I don't knit, I don't do any of that. I probably, I tried to crochet before, but I honestly screw everything up, so, you know, I just leave it alone. <laughs> oh, I have two matches right there, too. How, how'd that, wait, did I turn this upside down? I turned this upside down, didn't I? Maybe that's the problem. Yep, it was upside down. Okay, so this one. <laughs> you know. You don't like baking, but you love bacon. <laughs> yep, no baking, bacon, yes. Yes, yes, yes. And I don't even... <laughs> and I don't even cook that. I throw it in the microwave. Bam, done. <laughs> yeah, 
Yep. And if I uh, want it, it in the microwave. yeah, Scott will throw it in the <laughs> microwave for me. If I really though want to, I will take the time for the super nice, yummy, thick bacon, crispy stuff. I put it in the oven. I'm an oven bacon girl. I like it in the oven, but my microwave bacon is right there when I need it. So. <laughs> All right, let's get this on. Come on, right there. There we go. This is like a very sloppy quilt. Uh, this is this is the sloppiest I've made in a long time, from my own judgmentalness. This is like I shouldn't have went with these little one inches. That's what it is. That's okay. It'll get used and loved by somebody. this real quick. Okay, that was the top, right? Gotta make sure. Did I turn it again? Oops. Stay. Do you need a hand? I'm right here. No, I'm just making sure that this is, yep, 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 and yep. Right here goes on top of here. I don't need the paper. You can just leave it on the floor. Out of the way. Sorry guys, had to rip it. And yes, I just yanked it. The whole thing decided to shift. said this is the sloppiest quilt I have ever made. This is like beginner Tiffany. Don't worry. Take your time. It's okay. I don't want to take my time. Well, you know what I mean. Just relax. It's okay. It looks beautiful. It's very pink and pretty and bright. Stupid threads out real quick. So I had to look for the seam so I can pull these threads real quick that I yanked instead of seam ripped. <laughs> Just know you can do that if you, you know, little pieces it's harder because then it messes them up. But 
these bigger pieces, I don't have a problem yanking them apart instead of seam ripping <laughs> with the actual tool. One more to add on. Make sure that's correct. Looks like it from here. Okay, just gonna lay it right here. And then put this on top of it. this last one and then we'll figure out the size and pretend that we're doing math so that we can add some borders <laughs> you keep track of how many quilts you make a year uh a year no but i'm at almost 900 total since i started quilting but you got to remember that also counts um table runners and wall hangings because technically those are little quilts I'm not counting, I do not count the ones that I quote for other people. That, uh, that list is over a thousand or more. That's really high. That's a really, really high list. Since I started long arming quilting for others, yeah, I've quilted a lot of quilts. There's s several of you already out there that have had me quote like 10 of your quilts. So I just know that that number is really high. All right, here is my top. It's my size at the moment. I mean, if I pull it up off the floor, it comes to my above my nose. So there you go. I know. I'm just <laughs> I'm just saying where the size is height wise. So, but I'm going to add some borders. Where'd that measuring thingy go? Can you pass me that? The tape measure. Would yeah. The measuring thingy. Yeah, the measuring thingy. <laughs> the thing that measures. That fancy highfalutin measuring thingy. Yeah. So at the moment it is. 45 and a half by um, what's that number down there 58 and a half so 58 and a half by 45 and a half but we're going to add some borders and I'm either going to go with light pink first hold on like pink first, a small one, and then the medium one, a little bit bigger, and then the darker one last. What do you guys think? I like that, right? What do you think, Scooty? Yeah? yeah. Three borders. Can you light, put, so medium. If you have them up there, can you put the reverse, go dark to light? Dark first, yeah, just for me to see. then medium, then light. It's not going to work, though, because there's not enough light. 
Oh, the okay. light has to be the thinnest okay. one. I think I like it with the light in the beginning. Okay. I just wanted to see it the other way. Okay. All right. Since you asked. I'm going to press this real quick so that we can cut some, I think. Is that maybe too much pink? Nope. This is nope. the pink quilt. <laughs> this is the super pink, pinky quilt. It's, that's why I called it the pink rose quilt or something like that. What, did it, what is the title of today's video? Yeah, the pink rose quilt, because it is all pink. Every last bit of it. All right, how much do we have here? We've got about 18 inches. What did I need to do? Hold on, God, think about this. I need one, two, three, four, five, six and a half. So seven strips divided by 18 inches. Seven divided by 18. Seven I mean, eight. Divided by eight. No, no, no. Time. Uh, seven. Eighteen divided by seven. That's not going to be even. That's two point five seven one four. Two point five. So two and a half inch. Okay. So I can go two and a half inch first with the pink. Oh, we need a long ruler first to make a nice straight edge. Let's just fold this in half. Find it to be a little easier for me to manage. So we're gonna do two and a half inch strips. And we'll sew those on. And then we'll come to the conclusion on how many we need for the next round. <laughs> did we get all four layers? It looked like it. Yes, it did. Turn it around, cut two and a half inch strips. I'm getting seven of them. Two, three, four. Oh, I probably could have pulled out my stupid cutter thing, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Five. That would have worked on it, yes. Six and seven. I'm going to sew these together end to end, and I'm going to also make a random width strip real quick for my scraps bin. Perfect. Just go over there. I'm going to hook these together end to end, but first I'm going to cut the salvage off of them all. I do not do, for those that are beginners or curious or even long-time quilters, I never do uh, a bias seam for my borders, ever. I always connect them on the straight, with a straight seam. I never do a diagonal. That's for binding, not for these. And I actually, I've been long-arm quilting for quite some time now, and I honestly, I gotta tell you guys the truth, I find that the diagonal seams are more stretchier and I have a lot more bowing and fullness to fill in when I'm long arm quilting borders that have the diagonal seams. Nothing wrong with how you piece. I'm just saying it's a little bit more challenging on the long arm. The straighter seams um, aren't as stretchy. So I guess food for thought. Once I have this giant strip, I'm going to go ahead and do the sides, then the top and bottom of the quilt. I'm not even going to bother pressing them. Just going to grab my end, throw this on the ground, grab the lovely quilt and a side. Go down one side, go down the other. 
make sure that it's right sides together. I would have loved to have had enough pink to go all the way around, but there definitely isn't, no. Nope. So, the darker pink, I mean, the, to end it, but that's not gonna work. And I'm using up these pink that was sent to me. I also don't pin my borders on. I don't stretch or pull or tug, I just, I lay it on here, I line it up, and I hold it with my fingers. I don't pull on the quilt, I don't pull on the border, I just lay them right on top of each other. Obviously it's trying to pull because it's stuck down there on the floor. So the way I do it, I don't have no um, puckering or bowing or anything like that. And they lay pretty flat when I get to the long arm. And since I long arm my own quilts, I can't talk for other long armors, but I don't ever have a problem doing it this way, ever. Okay, I cut it to size. Turn the whole thing around and put one on this side now. Except instead of starting from the end that's right here, I'm going to go to the other end so that I have that equal on both sides. I like it that way. You could just keep going from end to end, but I like equal. <laughs> I don't know why. Very weird. But I like to have the equal on each side. Uh, I sew from the corner in when it's folded and I'm doing my mitered corner. I just come in from the edge. Once it's folded over, you know, you've folded it over to the side and then wrapped it on top of each other. I come in from the end. I don't come in a quarter inch. I used to a long time ago, but now I just come in from the edge. Either way it works, but. All right, fold it on top of itself. Nice straight cut. We're also going to put these over there where they go. All right, I'm not going to go to the iron just yet. I'm going to finger press my end right here and turn the quilt. Now I'm going to add my top and bottom. And then I'm going to line this end up and I'm going to come over by laying on top of here and make sure that there's no seam at the end, and there isn't. I don't like when a seam ends at the end. I think I've told you guys this a lot of times. <laughs> it totally, totally messes with my brain. <laughs> my hair is falling out of the clip even. <laughs> Do you need me to help? Face. Can you reclip it? No. I can reclip it. Oh. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> I sewed it with this not right wrong sides right sides together. So what I'm going to do <laughs> is flip it. <laughs> that's a first. I usually pay attention to that. <laughs> All right, so that's right side and that's right side. Dummy me. Good thing I didn't sew it all the way close to the edge. I left it open and I could just flip the whole thing. <laughs> it happens. It's the solids. That's what it is. When you have a solid fabric, definitely uh, 
<laughs> messes with you. <laughs> And then when I get to this end, I'm going to finger press this seam back just at the edge. And then once it's on the table, I'll fold it. You know, I probably only needed six strips instead of seven. Okay, once that's on there, go to this side. Grab the opposite end so they have an equal. <laughs> I'm so weird, right? I don't know why I do that, but I do. Finger press that back. Lay this on here. Make sure that it is right sides together. Okay, it is. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. It's been a long time since I've done that. The batting on the wall is just 100% cotton batting. No, when I when I finally get the chance, I'm actually gonna get some flannel by the yard from um, Hobby Lobby and uh, put flannel on the wall neatly. Gonna finger press this first. Line it up. I need the iron on now. Yeah. And then I'll press this back, and then we're just gonna need seven strips again of the next color because I probably only needed six for this. So I'm gonna cut seven just because. No, I can do six again. I cut seven last time. I think six will go for this. So we're just going to cut six strips of the next color. All right, I'm going to press this back real quick and then we're going to choose the next pink and cut six strips off of that of whatever size I can get from that. Thank you. Takes a second to press this back real quick, all the way around. So the next border is going to be a little bit bigger. Do you have any tips on choosing the fabric for an outer border? Um, well, I would choose a fabric that sort of goes with it. If you don't have like the matching fabric line, Find something that's similar to it, but um, I've done this on a couple quilts where I've removed a piece of fabric from the actual quilt top. I just pulled out that piece and added the fabric that I used as the border so that it's in the top of the quilt. That way it looks like it went together. So if you have something that matches the fabric, but it looks weird because the actual quilt top itself doesn't have any of that color in it or any of that piece in it, but it does look good take out a block or two and add that color to it. You know, replace it with the border fabric. There's a tip. Choosing them wise, I kind of just grab and go most times. If it looks like it goes good, then it goes good. <laughs> I'm very uh, not picky. Hence this funky pink quilt. That's such a disaster. I haven't made this much of a mess on a quilt in a long time. All right, first, first border on. Let me put this up here real quick while we cut out the next. All right, let's see how much we have available here and we only need six strips because, yeah, even if I would have, even if I cut them at like three and a half inches, so there's 18 inches here. 
Let me press it real quick. So 18 divided by 6. What number do we get? 3. 3. Oh, I can't do that math even in my own head. Okay. So we're going to cut 3 inch strips. The last one was 2 and a half. So this one will be 3 inch. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Let's make it nice and straight. Try not to cut too much off because I only have exactly 18 inches. So we're going to cut three inch strips now. One, two, three. Four, five, and look at that. Perfect. I shifted the ruler. Six. There we go. Close that blade. We're going to um, do the same thing. I'm going to cut all the salvages off first. I'm going to hook them all together. Hey, I won't say that the quilt is ugly when you cut it. Mm -hmm. Cut all these off at the exact same time. Oops. <laughs> it didn't want to come off there. <laughs> all right, I'm going to sew these together end to end. And then attach them. So I'm pull that bottom piece out of the way because the next two are right side together and the next two are right side together and so on and so forth. There's uh, lots of video on borders. I probably should do one specifically on borders, I guess, where I'm only doing borders, but... So now I'm just going to throw all this on the floor, grab my end. I'm just going to leave it up here for two seconds while I grab the quilt. But first, I'm going to take a drink of water. And we're going to attach this now, sides and then top and bottom, same as before. And then we'll do the dark pink and then the quilt will be done. Well, the top will be done. There we go. Let's put these on. Same. Oop, wait, wait. Make sure it's the right sides. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> Pay attention. I'm just going to fold it up onto itself, trim it to size. Put a bobbin in real quick. <laughs> oh, I have one bobbin left. Oh my goodness. I didn't pre-wind any for today, so we got lucky that that last one was pretty much full. <laughs> Right. The 
opposite side. Find the opposite end. Have you sewn all the borders together first before adding the quilt? Yes, I have, and done mitered corners. Yep, I've done that before too. I've done that quite a few times, actually. I do it mainly with pieced borders because it looks fun when it's, you know, done. But yep, I've sewn the borders together and then mitered them in the corners. Looks really cool that way, too. Are you going to tie your long quilting on this beautiful quilt top? Uh, no, probably not because nobody watches the long arm videos. <laughs> Sorry. I haven't been doing any long arm videos and I already have how to quilt roses uh, in the long arm videos. So, unfortunately, really no long arm quilting videos anymore. Unless I'm literally working on the frame that day, then you'll get long arm quilting. But no more dedicated videos. Unless it's something really cool that I haven't shown you before, but I've showed you probably a hundred different designs on the long arm. There's just not much interest in long arm quilting. For some there are, but there's a playlist filled with them though. All right, so I'm just going to do this end. Make sure it's right sides together. I'm also going to check to see where it lands. And it does not land on a seam. What weight thread are you using? I am using 50 weight thread. The bobbin, 50 weight thread. I wasn't in the bobbin, though. There was 40 weight in the bobbin a bit ago. because I was using other bobbins up that I had sitting here from other projects that I was working on where I was matching thread color. So has some of this quilt has like a pinkish thread inside of it, of piecing it, and now it's white with gray on top. <laughs> it's a little bit of mixed thread. And it's okay to do that too. If you want to start using up all your bobbins, Nothing says you have to have, a, you know, under the light colors, I would definitely not put a, like a dark green or a black or anything like that. But under these colors over here that are black, use whatever color you want. All right, so I'm going to finger press this back. I'm just going to lay this on top of here nicely. Cut it to size. Go to the other side. Finger press that back just on the edge. Grab my other end. Make sure that this is enough because I don't have any more fabric if it's not. And it is. <laughs> I knew six strips would work though. <laughs> if the other one had so much left over at seven strips. And I don't waste any of that either. I'll cut it up and put it in my solid two and a half inch square bin. press this real quick and then we're going to see how much the other fabric there is and cut that one as well but next time I will need seven strips because I'm going to go a lot bigger okay so see I had this much left so if I was to do like a five inch on the next one I have one two 
three and I wouldn't have enough, so I need to cut seven for the next border. What design are you going to long arm on this? Roses is the design I'm probably going to long arm on this because it has roses. So roses and leaves probably. Sounds good. Are you going to do them in pink? I uh, probably will do them in pink thread, yes. I think you need your yellow wisp. Oh, yeah, like yellow wisp would look good too, yes, for sure. Definitely bigger than my ironing table now. Well, at least in length. One more side for me to press, and then we'll go cut the next one. It actually kind of looks really cool tapering in color like this, and in size. I was trying to help you, but I think you didn't support it. I was trying to lay it on there for you. Yes, I do back with fleece or minky. I, so do you still put batting in? I still put batting in, yes. Uh, I've had a couple clients that didn't want batting in with their minky. All right, so here's the next border on there. Let's just do one more, and then it'll be done. I'm just going to lay it on here. It's up here sideways right now, but as long as it's up here momentarily to cut the next fabric. All right, how much do I have of this? This is a 108. Oh, look at that. So I don't need as many strips. Hold on, let me press this real quick. I was going to cut seven strips, but this is definitely a 108. Let's see. It's way bigger than that. We're gonna fold it in half like this. Straighten it up. I said I needed seven strips, so how about we cut one? No, go halfway. Two. We'll cut three. Because it's a 108, so I only need three strips probably. If I need more, I'll add more to that end, but. We're going to go with, if this one's two and a half and that one's three, let's do, not four, let's do four and a half. That'd be cool, right? Yeah. Let's do four and a half. So I need one, two, that'll give me four, right? One, I don't know, that's number two, but yeah, just in case I need a fourth strip. Four and a half, because five would have been too much. Two. I'm going to cut a third one. But we're not going to do anything with that in case we need it. But for now, I don't need to make any seam just yet. We're going to cut the selvage off. And I'll be able to do the two sides in whole. And then... because it's way oversized. So we're going to go ahead and grab this side right here, bring it down. All right, so 
on down. I will need that fourth strip. All right, let's fold this on top of itself. Because two of these together should do from side to side, but I'm going to need, well, we're going to see. We'll see. I'll just set this aside for now. Do the opposite side. Another full strip. Let's cut the salvages off. Cut it nice and straight. Toss that in the garbage. And hook this on. And if you want to make a quilt big quickly, this is the best way to do it. Just start adding borders. Bigger size, bigger size border, bigger size, bigger size border. <laughs> Just keep making the borders bigger. There was actually a few quilts at the quilt show that had um, just borders, lots of borders. It's nothing wrong with a ton of borders. All it is is just a bunch of frames, and I rolled over it. Go figure. <clears throat> All right, come to the end. Fold it on top of itself. Set that aside. All right, I'm going to press these before I add the next two sides, or the top and bottom, real quick. That way it's a little bit um, already completed with that part. Makes it easier, real quickly, like. I think it looks cute with the three different colors. Good. What a way to use up scrap fabric that's in yardage form. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, we're gonna start with the long piece. And then if I have to hook those together, I will. Or I can just have no seams at all and cut another strip and have not any seam on the top and bottom, you know. And the sides, because the sides have no seam either. Cut the salvage off. Let's see how long it is while it's in half. Because I, I could. Nope, that's not going to. Yep, so those pieces will be pieced. No big deal. Stay on the table. Thank you. Yeah. I used to honestly. I have some five pound dumbball, dumbballs, dumbbells that I used to use at the ends of the rulers like uh, Jordan, Donna Jordan does on Jordan fabrics. But uh, then I started using them to hold the quilt up. I'd just pick it up off the floor and just set it on the quilt to keep the quilt on the table. Um, that's when I had a table that didn't have much to the side. It only had a little bit left to the side. So I'd pick up the whole quilt and then just put a dumbbell on it and it would stay. Um, I have lots of table space now. I have over a yard more to go, but I, for some reason, the quilts don't even want to stay on the table. What light are you using on your juicer? What, what? What light? It's, it's, the, it's the built in machine. light that comes on the machine. I don't have any fancy lights for it. It's plenty light enough for me with the lights in the, in the room. It's perfectly fine. Are you going to do a yellow binding? Yellow I could binding. do a yellow binding. Or black binding or any color binding. All right, so I'm going to hook. Color you're gonna use, though? I have no idea what color I'm going to use right now. I'm going to hook one of these to one of these. And then sew it on the other side. <laughs> Okay, grab a far side, throw a whole thing on table, make sure that it's right sides together. Like I said, I could have done the no seam, <laughs> which would have probably looked really nice, but I really don't care. I can cut the rest of that darker pink, this darker pink that's on the third border up into like one and a half inch strips and use that on something else. And it'll already be cut and ready to go. I have, I do have throat lights at my long arm. It goes from about here on the long arm all the way around the throat, all the way, and then it comes down close. So it illuminates the whole long arm space under there. And they're dimmable. And what? Tell the lady she can get that and do that. Yeah, you can get one of those. Make sure you only get the 10 inch though. For this kind of machine, there's an 8 or a 10 inch um, lighting thing. Make sure you don't get anything bigger because then you're going to have to cut it. And then it's just a waste of money, honestly, to get that much lighting. So, and chop it off and never be able to use it again. All right, so I'm going to fold this on top of itself. Then I'm going to take it to the iron. 
press it, the top and bottom, not the whole thing, and then hang it up so that you guys can see what it looks like. And then we'll go lay my other quilt in the living room floor. It's not been pressed. It's not had a good press yet, so, um, and I'm not going to press it before laying it out there for you guys, so I'll show you what my dream quilt looks like, though. And you'll get the general idea before I press it and add a border. Because I'm most likely going to add a border to it. Yeah, no, nope, we'll go out there and look at my dream quilt. But it's going on the floor, so I'm not going to hang it on the thingy because it's just the top and putting it on those clips, it's going to stretch it. And since it has curved bias seams, I don't want it to get messed up before it gets to the next stage. So I'm 100% just going to lay it on the floor to show you guys. That way nothing gets stretched or pulled out of wonkiness. And it looks it, almost exactly like my dream, by the way. So, minus the border thing. I don't even remember, because now it's been so long, what the borders of my dream looked like. I know it had them, though. I think they were um, spaced. But, all right, you're going to unplug this and then come to one side of the wall while I'm on the other to flatten it out on the design wall, please. Oh, dang it. Yeah. What we're getting out here. This, this, up about right there is good. There we go. Let's smooth it out. I can see the whole thing. It's. That didn't work. It's a little heavy. It's heavy. Yes. <sighs> smooth the rest of it out. I'm just gonna just hold on to it. Fall again. It seems to be the more you smooth it, the more it stays. There we go. All right, guys. There it is. Let's adjust the camera. And while Scott shows you with the camera in here, I'm going to go lay out my quilt. Oh, I just got into that. Okay. I got to find it. Where did I put it? I have no idea. Oh, there it is. Ugh. It's on a hanger so it doesn't get ruined. I have a lot of work into this. I spent six days on this thing. <laughs> yeah, my quilt show quilt you'll see from the video, by the way, guys. So I'm in the living room. He's going to show you the one on the wall until this is laid out, and then we'll come out here. I'm going to move the kitty cat stuff out of the way. <laughs> it doesn't fit on the floor totally because it's huge, so... Again, and it's not pressed. In a minute. I gotta move a couple things out of the way. Okay. That panel right here. And don't be shocked, guys, when you see this, okay? Just, just you know, regular, regular, normal. Anybody can do things like this. I'm just a designer, so it makes it a little bit easier for me. All right. That's as best as it's going to get. All right, guys. Oh. oh. It's pretty much 63 by... 63 by... 76. 76. 63, 76. I'm going to write that down. 63, 76. 63, 76. That's what this one is right here. All right, I'm going to take a drink, and we're going to go to the living room. All right, my friends, like I said, no dropping jaws, just normal reactions, okay? <laughs> I'm just kidding. 
and you get to stare at me because I don't want you to see the floor yet. Here we go. I actually have to climb up on a chair for you guys to you need a hand. Don't hurt yourself. see. Don't hurt yourself. Here we go. All right there. Can you see it? That is my dream quilt. It needs a border. I think I'm going to do strings around it to get rid of more strings because it needs more strings. So this creates one loop. This right here creates another loop. And then this creates another loop. So that's my dream quilt. All right, climbing off the table now. Yeah, from here, it's kind of hard to get it on one shot. Yes, I outdid myself. <laughs> so that will be my next show quilt. For those that are curious, that's gonna be a show quilt. All right, I'm going to leave it here on the floor momentarily while we go back to the room. Do, 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 do. Okay, that's it. You guys got to see a sneak peek of it. <laughs> All right, any questions before we get off of here? So we can get, get going. That is my own design, yes. Yep, yep, yep. I showed you guys how to make the diamond parts and told you my idea for the corners. Those corners with the curves, there is no seams on the diagonal, no diagonal seams. So they are literally one giant curve and it's not a, like a drunkard's path curve, it's an, a totally different shape curve. So I made those up on my own with giant blocks. Let's just say it was a little on the challenging side, but I figured it out and made that happen. <laughs> So it was really it was really fun to do. Um, I finished it last week on like Monday or something like that or Tuesday. I think it was Monday. I came in here and just <laughs> sewed all the rest of it together. But now I really I really want to put borders on it or at least one, you know, just some five inch strings all the way around because it just ends in white. And to me, that's just kind of blah. You know how big it is? Yeah, it's like 99 or 100 by 100. It's not laid flat. I didn't press it or anything. So that was our estimated measurement from throwing it on the floor and measuring it. So it's like 99 or 100 by 100, something like that. Are you going to do a video of it? Uh, no, I'm not going to do a video. I showed you guys how to make the diamonds. That's as far as it goes. The other parts, I, I, the only way to make a video is to have templates and be able to have you guys print things. I don't know how to do any of that. I don't know how to make a design on an EQ8 yet and well, I just to all that. The so curves. the curves are hard. They're hard. Not any drunkard's path curve. It's a totally different curve. So it's a little on the challenging side. And since I've already done it, I can't show you how to do it because it's already there. <laughs> so anyways, maybe in the future I could show you guys how to do other kind of curves, though, for things. What size strips are in between that? These are one inch. What? One inch and one inch by one inch square. So one inch by six and a half and one inch by one inch. And then these are six and a half inch squares. And then so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven across by four, five, six, seven, eight, nine down. So six and a half inch squares, seven across by nine down, one by six and a half inch sashing and one by one inch cornerstones. And then a two and a half, a three inch, and a four and a half border, which made it a total of 63 by 76. Perfect, right? All right. Anyways, I'm gonna get off of here. I've now passed two hours. So uh, anyways, thank you guys all for hanging out. I was happy to show you guys my lovely big, huge dream quilt. It's almost done. It's almost a dream come true. <laughs> so thank you guys for hanging out and I'll see you next Sunday. Bye.